Aloha, everybody, and welcome to part six of The Hobbit. And we're still going through the chapter Riddles in the Dark, which has us going through this gigantic, elaborate goblin mine. And uh, I like the fact that we start off with this big, slow lift ride so that we can look at the entirety of this level. You know, the minecart tracks, the water wheel, the goblins walking around down there. This level is so gigantic in scope, and you go to, like, every single section throughout this level. You're, you're going through every single bit of this stage, and uh, it wows the player, you know? For 2003 GameCube standards, this is pretty cool to look at, pretty mind-blowing stuff. We didn't have HD high-definition graphics yet, you know, so... I enjoyed this quite a bit back then. Here's the lever I need to fix that lift. Whee! <laughs> you ride that chain and it takes you all the way back to the switch box that uh, I saw previously and I didn't have to backtrack at all. I just rode the chain and I'm back to where I was. Again, very minimal backtracking going on with this stage despite how gigantic and elaborate it is. So uh, I appreciate that. There's no you know, redoing old set pieces again and again and again because I gotta go back a while just to do one thing. It's very, very considerate, this design. Very considerate indeed. Behind the scenes, it is a scorcher today. Oh my god. Winter is finally ending, the snow is finally melting, and uh... Oh, it's hot in here. <laughs> it sucks for Let's Plays, right? Because, like, I have to turn off all my air conditioning because it's going to create this noise in the background that is going to overlap and you'll hear it in the commentary and I want my voice to be as clear as possible. I don't want to have any background noise. I don't want to hear this fan going on in the distance and uh, you're already... Pr I already have to edit out like the fan of the computer itself, you know? So it takes a lot of tinkering with Audacity and its audio levels and removing certain noises because that's what I do for every single one of my Let's Plays or my Final Fantasy videos or whatever, so fun little behind-the-scenes tidbit for you there, but uh, when you're doing Let's Plays and you turn off your fan on a very hot day just so it's quieter. I love that. Oh, that's so good. But uh, <laughs> basically, I'm sweating like a pig. Every time I do a Let's Play in the summer, I basically have to put on deodorant, otherwise I'm going to stink up the place because I'm talking so loudly into a microphone. I don't know why. I wouldn't consider this a workout, but it does keep me very hot. It keeps me very, very warm, this activity, and, uh... Camera, stop screwing up. Camera. Camera. I got very tight platforming here. If I go off, I will fall and I will die, and that'll be no good. So I gotta be very careful with my platforming. The, the camera in The Hobbit is not always perfect. Oh god, I got poisoned. Uh, the, the camera in The Hobbit is not very perfect. Uh, it's, for the most part, it has fixed moments every now and then. Like, especially when I'm going on those rotating lifts that take me higher through the goblin cave. But, um, generally I have to move it around a lot with the C-stick. Which means I'm constantly moving with the left analog stick, and I'm moving the camera with my other thumb on the C-stick. And, uh, sometimes the camera just keeps resetting when I don't want it to. Like, if I'm tiptoeing, I want to get it behind Bilbo, and then it just decides, I'm gonna go to the side of Bilbo now. Like, stop it! I need it behind me so I can go through this level, God damn it! Ah. <laughs> this platforming's tense. Not gonna lie, the platforming's not perfect, it is a little bit... The thing that adds to the anxiety of The Hobbit is that it's not great with the drop shadows, and it's hard to know, it's hard to gauge just how far Bilbo will jump when you jump to a spot, you know? Like, when I was just in that lower section, I thought I was gonna overshoot and go past the platform and fall into the bottomless pit, and that's very, very easy to do, you know? You just sort of have to get used to the platforming and understand how the movement is in relation to your control stick and get used to the fact that sometimes your jumps might need to be slowed down a little bit. You don't want to hold up on the control stick. Maybe pull it back a little in mid-jump. Although some people may say, well, that's bad design, Clement. Yeah, it might be. It might be. It's not a perfect game, The Hobbit. It's not a perfect game at all. Ah, oh, this must be the Wartstone. Oh good, I can finally bribe Ugg Slap the Orc. <laughs> I'm Ugg Slap, I need the Wartstone! 
Give me the wart stone, Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> oh, I once impressed a person with all the different voices I could do, and they were just like, "How could you just do all these weird voices?" And I'm just like, "I don't know. I just do." <laughs> but anywho. Yeah, so now that I got the wart stone, I gotta go back to where Ugslap is, and he will let me through the gate so that I can leave the goblin cave and try and save Balfour the dwarf, you know, along with my other dwarf friends. I'm not gonna say their names. No. I bet you were expecting me to say their names, weren't you? But I'm not gonna do that. I've, I've shown numerous times through this playthrough already I know who they are. So, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I found your wartstone. Now please, open the gate. <laughs> oh, I'll open the gate. <laughs> Ugh, slap, you seem so trustworthy. What the hell? All right, folks, we got a boss fight in quotation marks. Maybe, kind of, sort of, eh? With Ugh, slap and, uh... He's got a lot more health than the other goblins. He doesn't have any extra tactics. I think he does a little bit more flips and tricks whenever you try to swing at him than your average goblin enemy. Uh, but for the most part, he just has a lot of health. He has a ridiculous amount of health, so it takes a lot to kill this guy. You gotta slash at him quite a bit. And again, I would recommend using the lock-on to block his attacks with Sting. And just to get a little bit of a bearing, because otherwise I have to keep moving the C-stick to get the camera behind me. And since he's flipping around so much, the camera's always losing track of him. So it's good to lock onto him and collect your bearings. But, uh... Nothing I can't handle. I've beaten a lot of goblins already. And bye bye, Ugslap. Maybe. Oh, come on, let me hit you. <laughs> God damn, why won't you die? There you go. God damn, Ugslap. If, if it was just gonna attack me in the first place, he may as well just open the gate, but whatever. He wanted the wart stone, I suppose, but uh, yeah, we're getting close to the end of this stage, folks. We're getting close to the end. Now we just gotta climb our way out. Again, Bilbo does not have great fall damage, so make sure your jumps count. You don't want to jump to a place that might get you killed, obviously. <laughs> Pro tip, dying is bad. <laughs> don't let enemies kill you. Ah, oh, I got poisoned again. I think treasure chest poisonings are a lot deeper and a lot more long-term than if, say, a green spider were to bite me. Because I had almost a full health bar when I got poisoned just now, right? And I kept thinking it was going to wear off and that I wouldn't need to use an antidote. That I could save the antidote for later for, you know, the next level, which happens to have a lot of poisonous enemies. But then I'm getting close and two bubbles... And that last bubble, Jesus. Okay, I guess the poison lasted the entire health bar. <sighs> I'd recommend saving here because we have a stealth section. Ah, those guards look much too strong for me. I'd better not try to fight them. There's Balfour. I need to set him free. So just like in Chapter 2, Roast Mutton, where we were dodging all of the trolls, we have to dodge all the goblins here. Even though we've been killing so many goblins up to this point, right? But now? Oh no, Bilbo can't take these guys. Watch out. But no- oh god. You're roasting my pot, Huffing! Take him to the pits! So that's what happens. 
If you get caught by the goblins here, it's instant kill, and again, if you didn't save, you would go back either to the beginning of the stage, or to wherever your last save was. So it's important to save just before the stealth section, it's really easy to screw up. It's not like Metal Gear Solid on PS1, where we have a Soliton radar system with a whole bunch of cones showing us where the goblins can see us or whatever, so... You gotta pay attention to where they're facing, what direction they're walking, because you don't want them to just spring surprise you with instant death while you're sneaking around. Anywho, Balfour's in the cage, and I gotta talk to him. Is that you, Baggins? Shh! Don't alert the guards! Get me out of this cage! How? That switch opens the gate to this cell. Yes, but what about the guard? Once this gate is open, you won't have to worry about him anymore. Hey, Goblin! You're just a filthy spawn of an elf! Shut up! Sick burn, Balfour. <laughs> really racist towards elves, but whatever. <laughs> so I gotta go over to the switch now that he's distracted the guard, but again, gotta watch out. I'm gonna bring up a term that some people might hate hearing, but uh, ludonarrative dissonance, right? Because, like, Bilbo can kill so many goblins up to this point. I had a big, epic fight with Ugg Slap. It was like this big, crazy duel. And now I got a whole bunch of goblins that look exactly like all the other goblins I've been facing up to this point. But, oh no, no. Bilbo can't take these guys. They're gonna fuck them up if I get seen. So, I gotta be stealthy now, all of a sudden. <laughs> it doesn't quite fit with the narrative of what I've been doing up to this point, you know? Either way. Freedom! Time to play! Baruch Hazard! <laughs> For many long years, those goblins forced me to work on these dwarf-built mining contraptions. Honor demands their destruction. Follow that path. The minecart will take you out of these goblin caves. Well, thank you very much, Balfour, for killing all of those goblins for me. I'll be sure to spread your heroic details to Thorin, Feely, Keely, Balin, Dwalin, Oin, Gloin, Dory, Nori, Ori, Bifer, Bofer, Bomber, and Gandalf as I get back to- Ah, shit! I said I wouldn't mention their names like that. Ugh. <laughs> this is becoming a meme now. I'm not much of a meme guy. I'm not much of a memester. I'm not much of an internet person. Would you believe that I don't use my phone for Twitter or Facebook or anything online? I get, like, text messages from my friends with my phone, and I call people with my phone, and I use it to, like, lock off uh, password protection for some of my devices, but, like, I, I don't surf the internet with it. I'm very anti-internet with my phone. I, I go on the internet with my PC and my laptop, and that's about it. Because when I'm walking around town, I don't want to check the internet. I just want to keep doing what I'm doing when I'm out and about. That's my philosophy on how the internet should be handled outside of home. But, you know, I'm a weirdo. I'm old-fashioned like that. I'm a bizarre old kook. Don't aspire to be like me, the great Clement. I'm going to be 30 next year. How the hell did that happen? <laughs> I turned 29 this month. I'm gonna be 30 next year. How the fuck did that happen? Oh, God. Where did my life go? Shouldn't I have a child by now? <laughs> Am I behind in life? I don't know. But, uh... Either way, folks. We're getting to the end of the Riddles in the Dark stage. Uh, that was the last stealth section of this level. We won't have to worry about stealth ever again, because, oh man, here come some goblins, but... Oh, I can fight these guys. <laughs> the guys I couldn't fight earlier, they were the alpha male goblins, okay? These guys, these are the betas. These are the weak pansies of the goblins. I can take these guys. It's not like I'm some great warrior hobbit. But uh, this room is actually where we first met Balfour in the last part, so I guess they moved him downstairs in between videos, but, uh... Alrighty, let's get out of here. The minecart. Looks like this is the way out of here. Alrighty, folks, so you hop into the minecart, and now we're riding a minecart through the goblin caves, and, uh... 
Basically, we have two pathways we can go with this minecart, and Bilbo can swing his sword while he's riding in this thing, and we have to swing at these signs as we pass by them to flip them from red signs to green signs, and when they're green signs, they'll take us to the direction that goes out of the cave. But uh, you'll find yourself looping and going in circles over and over again, or even returning to the area you came from and having to go back down again. Uh, if you're not hitting the signs, and you can find yourself just backtracking, but, uh... Luckily, I hit the right signs, and I know where I'm going. And Bilbo broke his neck. <laughs> he broke his back and his neck. Adventure over. Good God. But finally, folks, the overhill and underhill portion of this level is over! Ugh, what nasty, slimy things live here. We have finally caught up to the book, and now we're actually in the Riddles in the Dark section of the book. <laughs> we're finally where the level should actually be, but, uh... Look at this spooky scenery, this nice, quiet cave going on here. Don't fall in the water, you can't swim, obviously. Actually, we don't have to worry about anything in here, there's no enemies down here. But, health potion right behind these steps. Booyah! So we're at the end of the stage, folks. All we have to do is run into... Oh, look at that! A ring! Looks like a good piece of jewelry. I think I'll pick it up. Hello, what's this? A ring! Now that is one fancy ring, if I do say so myself. I might consider it the one ring for me, eh? If you're familiar with the Lord of the Rings, you know why that ring is super, super special. <laughs> Either way, folks, uh, that's it for Riddles in the Dark. I'm going to buy me some extra potions for, that are going to upgrade my medicine chest, and I'll see you in Part 7. Until then. Lost again in the tunnels, Bilbo found a gleaming golden ring. He put the mysterious ring in his pocket. Then he realized he was not alone. Bilbo introduced himself to the mysterious creature named Gollum. They agreed to play the ancient game of riddles. The rules were simple. If Gollum lost the game, he would show Bilbo the way out. But if Bilbo lost, Gollum would eat a tasty dinner. Soon, Bilbo couldn't think of any more riddles. <laughs> Is it scrumptious? What have, what have I got in my pocket? <laughs> Not fair! Well, that's my riddle. Hands, a knife, this string, it, or, or nothing. All wrong. Now, show me the way out. <sighs> we must go and get something first. <sighs> what have I got in my pocket? My ring. in its nasty little pockets. It must know the way out! Bilbo followed Gollum out of the cave and found his friends on the other side of the Misty Mountains. But they were not out of danger. A pack of wild wargs attacked! Trees. 
Save!